Hi everyone, Jess and Al from the psychcollective.com. Jessica, our clinical psychologist. Al just had a psychologist. Okay, we are continuing our sleep series today and we're going to talk to you about a thing called bed restriction therapy. Now, this is uh, can be a bit of a stricter and for some people's experiences, a bit more of a brutal strategy for controlling sleep, but very, very, very effective for helping out people who find that they spend a lot of time in bed awake, particularly where they've got wakenings throughout the night and their sleep is quite broken. Okay, so a couple of terms that I want to define first. Sleep latency is from when you get into bed and you start the process of trying to fall asleep and how long it takes you to get to sleep. Ideal sleep latency, half an hour, okay? On the other end of it, how long from when you wake up to how long you feel like you're actually fully awake, sleep inertia. So how long does it take you to get kind of out of sleepiness into a wakefulness? Also about half an hour. The reason I want you to know this is because if you're waking up going, oh, I'm still really, really tired, give yourself half an hour and then reassess yeah. whether or not you're really tired because some people make a snap judgment in those first few minutes of I'm really, really tired, that must mean I had a terrible night's sleep when actually they're still just in their sleep inertia. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna give you an example here. Let's imagine this person goes to bed at nine o'clock at night and it takes them about an hour to fall asleep, which would be a protracted sleep latency. And then say they sleep for about two hours and then they wake up and their head's full of stuff, they're tossing and turning, they can't get comfortable, they keep worrying about things and they're laying in bed for about two hours. They finally fall asleep again for about two hours or so, wake up for another hour, sleep for another hour, wake up at six, I'm exhausted, I've had a terrible night's sleep, I don't wanna get out of bed. They'll lay around until about seven o'clock in the morning and then finally push themselves out of bed. This is a that problem. That terrible. Yeah, it is. This, is. this is a problem, right? Because you're getting a total of five hours of sleep, but it took you 10 hours in which to try and get that. Now a really important kind of key point within sleep hygiene and when we're doing kind of sleep training and all that sort of stuff is a thing called sleep efficiency. Sleep efficiency is measured at, as the hours of sleep divided by the total time in bed as a percentage. So what we can see here is this person slept for five hours, right? Over a 10 hour period. Their sleep efficiency is only 50%. It's terrible. And they're going to wake up feeling exhausted and lethargic and there's probably also kind of the periods of heightened arousal may mean that there's a bit of an emotional hangover the next morning because they've been worrying about stuff throughout the sleep or throughout the night. And it's just going to be a mess. And if this kind of continues, then this is not fun. No, yeah? no, no, 50%. And I mean, really huge fragments. So these yeah. are, you know, when you, when you have your sleep all consolidated, it feels a lot more restful. Yeah, and you also kind of get to join your sleep cycles yeah. together so you're not getting so much fracture. What bed restriction therapy says is for the amount of time that you are asleep, we want you in bed for pretty much as tight a period around that as you can. If you are spending long periods of time in bed and awake, you are actually doing some harm in terms of your sleep efficiency. So what bed restriction therapy proposes is of the amount of hours of sleep that you usually get. So we would go through like say, get someone to keep a sleep diary for a week. Okay, we might actually put a copy of a sleep diary yeah. up on the website so you can download one if you want to use it to kind of keep a copy of it. Um, what is your average number of hours of sleep? Okay, so that's the first thing. What is your average number of hours of sleep per night? And then the next thing you got to work out is what time do you want to get up in the morning? All right, because again, you see our previous talks, we talked about circadian rhythm. We want you getting up at the same time every day, even on the weekends for the sake of maintaining kind of good consistency in your sleep hygiene. So let's say you decide that you want to get up at six and you're having five hours worth of sleep, which if we were aiming to consolidate your sleep into one solid block, which is the point of bed restriction therapy, we want you asleep by one. But in order to make that happen, you're allowed to go to bed at 12.30, because between 12.30 and one, we're giving you that half hour window for you to fall asleep, which is your sleep latency. Yeah, so I think it's just worth clarifying. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you might think that it's a great idea to go to bed at 10 o'clock relatively early, all right? But if this is what's happening to you, then it's actually not a great idea. Yeah. What you're actually proposing, which might sound kind of a bit stunning to some people, is no, go to bed after midnight. Yes. Okay? So it sounds like, well, hey, that's less sleep opportunity. Yes. Okay? But 
Yeah, so what we're actually trying to do here, bed restriction therapy is about trying to get you to consolidate all of those individual blocks and cram them together as one. Because then it means your sleep cycle can be kind of nice and consistent. You get down into your deep REM sleep, you get more of your REM sleep, you get less of awakenings, which means you've got less time in bed, tossing and turning and awake with your thoughts. And basically you get better at sleeping in solid blocks. All right. So bed restriction therapy would say, right, starting today for a week, you go to bed at 12.30. We hope that by that point, you've got some increased sleep pressure because you've been awake for an extra three and a half hours and well, you've been out of bed for an extra three and a half hours than you normally would be. We're hoping that you go to bed at 12.30. We're hoping you fall asleep pretty quickly because you're going to be feeling more tired because you've been awake for longer. You fall asleep at one and ideally we want you sleeping through. Alarm goes off at six and no matter how bad your bed's been, or your sleep has been, get out of bed. Yep. So none of this kind of laying around in bed, flicking around your phone, kind of tossing and turning, trying to get comfortable. Alarm goes off, get out of bed. Okay. And we do that for a week. And if after a week we're seeing that people are kind of consistently sleeping through, they're having less nighttime awakenings, look, kind of waking up for five minutes here or there, got to get up, go to the bathroom, get back in the bed, that's fine. We're actually not worried about those. They're normal, okay? If the waking is less than 10 minutes, then I'm actually not concerned about it at all. So when we've got it to a point that the sleep is consistently happening, then we add half an hour here. So then we're aiming to be sleeping for five and a half hours. And if you can maintain that without the awakenings, then we go to... Okay, go to bed at 11.30. So then we're getting from 12 to 6, so we're up to six hours. And you keep increasing it by half an hour back this way mm -hmm. until we get you to ideally about eight hours for some people at seven, for some people it's nine. If you start going to bed at 10.30, you're falling asleep by 11, but then you're awake again at one, push it back again. Yep. Okay, because if you've gone too far. This can take a period of about two weeks for people to see really good improvement and then kind of, and probably another two weeks of trying to find where their sweet spot is of what time they go to bed, what time they wake up, and how long to sleep for. When I teach this to my patients, because we run a, um, I run a sleep program, a sleep day program, I usually say to them, for the first two weeks, you're going to hate me. And that's okay, I'm a big girl, I can handle that. But trust me and try it anyway. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, yes, I need to do it, I strongly encourage you, get your treating health professionals on board first and set up some kind of stuff in your lifestyle around it. If you've got a partner, make sure that they're aware of what's happening and why. Why are you suddenly staying up three kind of hours later? This can have a bit of a kind of, it's, it can be one of those things where it might get a little bit worse before it gets better while your body readjusts. So plan it around what else is going on. Don't do this during exam period. Don't do this when you've got kind of a wedding, kind of like if you're about to get married. Don't do this when you've got really, really, really big life events coming up. Maybe this is something to implement over a holiday period if there's kind of some things that are a little bit quieter. But the other thing you need to consider, you've now got an extra three and a half hours, what are you going to do with those? So this is where we want to make sure that your light hygiene is really good. So during this, I want it kind of as dark and as warm in the quality of light as you can. Really, I want you to minimise screens, particularly here. Drop your screens, no TV. Do something to effectively bore yourself to sleep. Yeah. Colouring in. Or, or the other thing to do might be to actually address the thoughts. Well, yeah, yeah this, this is where yeah. you can do the time to kind of be doing the uh, clear your head before bed, which is our other video we've got up. Um, do something to kind of get the preparation for sleep, your mindfulness practice. Maybe if you've got chronic pain issues, then this can be an, a time to do some really gentle stretching. Maybe it's kind of have a bath or a warm shower. Um, kind of if you want to read pick something that isn't a page turner pick something that's boring yep. like find an old statistics manual <laughs> and read that one that yep. will put me to sleep okay but find stuff that kind of gets it really really boring so when you get to here you're kind of almost on the nod to ideally get into bed and be able to fall asleep yeah and don't and, and just to emphasize just this point before don't don't give up if your first night is just absolutely yeah. dreadful, okay? Yeah. Because it, it commonly is, yeah. okay? So you, 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 you accumulate by, by having a few lousy nights like, like set up like this, you're gonna actually increase your sleep drive. Yeah. And it's gonna take a couple of days to really kind of yeah. manifest, okay? So then, you know, after two or three or whatever days, boom, all of a sudden you'll have a good one, yeah. okay? Yeah. But so don't judge, don't judge it by the first night yeah. or two. You also gotta remember for sometimes, for some people, this kind of these awakenings are actually become habitual. 
So I want you to make sure that if you are having awakenings, you're not checking the clock, okay? Doesn't actually matter what time of the night it is that you've woken up for, all right? Um, it doesn't actually matter whether you've got 45 minutes or 15 minutes before your alarm goes off. I still want you to focus on keeping your arousal down, okay? But this is also pretty hard work to be doing alone. So I want you to be talking to your psychologist, psychiatrist, GP, health provider, whoever you've got, your support network around you to make sure you've got some people on board to help you with this strategy. Cool. Okay, all right. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know if you've tried this and whether or not it worked for you. Um, we've, I've got an infographic on this that I think I've got on Instagram, but I'll work on getting a handout up on that over the website over the next couple of weeks with the instructions on kind of how to do it. But that's enough for us today. Thank you very much. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.